Well, we have a house here on North 5th Street in Kansas City, Kansas. It's an old American Foursquare that's been abandoned. We don't really know how long. But the opportunity exists to buy this house and rebuild this house using local labor, local kids that are trying to learn the building trades to turn this into a high efficiency house that's long lasting, durable, healthy, efficient, and uh, a house worth living in. So that's our goal, is to try to look at this house and see what it needs, cost value, what we could do to it. It's rough, yes, it's been abandoned, needs a lot of work, but a gut remodel could turn this into a really nice house for somebody and do it at a price that we think is re really very reasonable. Well, this, uh, this flooring that exists in here is the original flooring. It's a, it's a hardwood, uh, you know, I'm not sure, it's probably an oak. Some of these places had really good old yellow pine flooring, but this, this floor can be sanded easily into a very attractive floor. These walls, this is the old lath and plaster wall, and uh, for expedience, what, what I'm finding is I've been able to drill through this, pack the insulation and patch the wall, and not have to tear this all out. Now, part of what we're going to want to do as we rebuild this is provide electricity that's up to code. So we need to see an outlet with every 12 feet. So we've got to get the, the outlets properly installed. We've got to get switches and lights properly installed. Anyway, these old windows are good, solid old structures. Well built. You know, it has a meeting rail here at the center that closes with a sash lock. There's a parting stop and, and trim rails. And inside this metal trim, or this wood trim, there's a metal weight hooked to the rope that goes across this pulley to provide the counterweight to make it easy to open. So that what usually happens is that that weight pocket cavity is a place that is uninsulated and lots, allows a lot of air leakage. So what I want to do on this house is take out the parting stop, remove the windows, and place a channel, a glide channel in here with spring-loaded capacity to lift the windows with springs so that we can pull the trim off and insulate the weight pocket cavities and eliminate the air leakages part of it. So that's one of the things we'll do as a window rehab. Now when it comes to replacement windows, these are good functional old windows. There's no excuse for replacing these with new windows. They're an R1 for the painted glass as it exists right now, and we're gonna install a, a storm window on the outside which will give us another R1 and we'll have an airspace in between, which will give us about a half an R. So we'll have a good solid R two and a half, which is comparable to the typical kind of stock window that we would buy as a, as a double pane replacement window. Okay, we, got a, we have another little bedroom here that I think can be brought back to life fairly easily. Here's the, the ducting system. This is the old ducting system that's built into the wall that was a part of the old gravity furnace system that this house originally would have expected to use. So warm air would rise up these ducts, then we would have uh, the ability to bring that warm air back to the furnace. And I'm looking right now, I'm looking around for a return. Where would the return be? I don't see any return capacity in here. So this would have allowed warm air to come up, and the only way that the return would have gotten back is with the door standing open. So one of the things we're probably going to want to do here is... Uh, in, this, in these spaces where we have connection with the hallway, we're probably going to want to cut a channel that allows air from this room to enter the building stud cavity here and then exit up high on this side or vice versa. We could do it either way so that we create a, a pressure channel from this bedroom to the main body of the house to allow air to return back to the mechanical system. So we're probably going to do some work to create pressure, what we call a pressure neutral boundary to allow the uh, return system to work. I'm looking at this existing lath and plaster wall that, that, is, that is here, and I know I'm able to find in, in rooms where the lath and plaster has been taken off, I know that there's no insulation. I know that I'm going to want to get into this wall to add wiring, but I'm also going to drill holes and pack cellulose insulation into these walls. And uh, there's a great example back here in the kitchen where the wall's been torn off so you can see what's happening. In here, the lath and the plaster has been removed. A certain amount of the lath still remains. And you can see that the good thing we've got is, is uh, there's exterior sheathing on the building. So we don't have to worry about the fact that there might be uh, just bare siding up against the side of the, the trim. So we have this, ca this cavity 
on all the walls that we could pack full of insulation. So first we'll go in and install new wiring as needed, and uh, then we'll put drywall back onto this, and in the areas where we already have uh, plaster, we'll leave it, we'll drill holes and we'll dense pack and completely pack uh, insulation into all the wall cavities, taking it from essentially an R0 wall to about an R13 to R14 wall and uh, giving us that barrier between inside and out. This area, this, this, we got a rim and band joist area that sits on top of a very wide stone foundation. There's a lot of opportunity to air seal and insulate this space. As, as we move over to the left, you can see that there's framing components that are built in right below the existing entry door up front that are helping to carry the structure. So we'll want to insulate that. And uh, here's the gas line coming in. But throughout this area, there's just uh, there's no insulation, no air sealing done in the rim and band joist area. So we're going to get that done and make sure that that's sealed. Then what I'd like to do is down this uh, foundation wall, I, don't, I want to install a foam uh, and then fur over the top of the foam so that I can put an interior wall in here that has wiring and we can use this as occupied space as well. If, uh, and I don't know if your camera's picking it up, but over on this north wall, we know from outside, and, and uh, interestingly, here's where the old coal chute used to be, right here on the north side. But uh, on the north side, we're getting some water in. You can see the evidence of all the, the leakage and water that's coming in here. So we're going to want to make sure that we get that drainage swale taken care of on this side, on the north side. Then this wall will be safe from, from moisture problems. You know, so first go to the source, find the problem. This is an old American four square. I'm guessing this house would have been built probably in the 20s or so. I, I don't have the actual date, but I'm guessing it was the 20s, if not a little earlier. It's an old uh, balloon framed house with lap siding and a, and a, a stone foundation. The old place has been abandoned now for some time, and uh, the, the really the good saving grace is the fact that the guy uh, who had it put a new roof on it, which has kept it from rotting at, at the top, but it's, uh, it, it's got obviously some maintenance work that needs to be caught up on. As we get up, we're on the north side, the uphill side of it right now, and the dirt from the north side slopes down toward the foundation, and you can actually see that the water's washed up against it, and we've got problems with mortar and deterioration in the stone. So on this north side, there's a real need to actually dig a drainage swale that takes the water away from the house and down to the drainage on further down to the east. So that's one of the things we want to do as well as there's an old mulberry here that uh, is pretty much dead, regrowing, needs to be removed completely. So we got a lot of trees to get out of the way. This, uh, I love this old uh, lap side in the old ship lap, and I think it's savable. We, there's physical labor involved in removing the old paint, and it is, because of its age, it is going to be lead-based paint, so we need to do all the protocols that you would employ for safe removal of lead-based paint, and uh, probably... A teaching opportunity. Yeah, probably what we'll do with this, and, and because of the fact that it's such a good teaching opportunity, is actually teach the techniques that are used to, to safely remove lead-based paint. As we move on around, the roof configuration will stay the same. We'll get new guttering on it. There's a back porch area. Part of it is a, a kind of a screened area that was just an entry porch. Part of it is a built-on area that's a, back, a pantry area on the back of the kitchen. I'm thinking we're probably going to come into this space back here and recreate both a pantry, an entrance, probably some kind of a deck, and probably incorporate a downstairs bathroom onto this space as well. Uh, here's the old uh, cistern that would have taken rainwater from the roof and captured this rainwater to uh, actually use as drinking water. As a matter of fact, there's still water held down here, so this old cistern system is still, is still functional. And what I'd like to do is actually recapture this and use this as a, to, to build a gray water system that could use rainwater and, and uh, wastewater to actually flush toilets and take care of some of the water needs so that we don't have to use expensive potable water for all of those functions that could be taken care of by rainwater. So this is a real opportunity to recapture this cistern system and put it back to work. Old ideas with value need to be recycled, so here's a chance for us to really gain it. My sense is I want to remove every tree that's on this south side from this telephone pole over here on the right all the way up to the street because I want to be able to gain solar benefit on the south side of this house. 
there's a space between the window channels. You see there's a, a group of windows on the west and a group of windows more to the east. On both floors, there's an opportunity in that stairwell space to install solar thermal air heat. So we want to get solar thermal air heaters installed and perhaps even another smaller one to provide heat for what will be the bathroom upstairs. Then on the actual sloped roof of this south side, there's enough room to get a couple of easy 4x8 panels or uh, maybe several evacuated tube panels that can provide hot water. And the hot water could be used in a number of ways. We could actually use that water, that heated water from the sun to heat the water that we use for bathing, cooking, etc. But we could also incorporate it into a ducting system so that we can blow air from the ducting system through heated radiators and perhaps provide some heat directly for the house using solar heat in the wintertime. So we'd like to gain all those things as part of this south side.